Hi Sagittarius, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your November 2022 astrology. Well, first of all, happy birthday to all you late November born Sagittarii, one Sagittarius, two Sagittarii, I, or Sagittariuses, Sagittarius. Okay, happy birthday to you guys born in November. Let's just leave it at that. So what I really want to unpack this month is this full moon lunar eclipse going on in Taurus, um, especially because full moon lunar eclipses bring a really particular energy in and of themselves. But this one is going to be conjunct Uranus and of course opposing the sun, Venus and Mercury in your 12th house in Scorpio. So there's a lot to get into here. Basically, let's talk about this first. So um, the full moon lunar eclipse, well, a lunar eclipse is like, you know, a full moon amplified, first of all. So the moon has everything to do with our emotion. It's associated with the sign of cancer, which has to do with, you know, nurturing, um, security, you know, that, that primal feeling or need for security and for well-being, you know, deep within ourselves. And... Uranus is the planet of unforeseen events. Uranus, Uranus has an explosive electric energy. It rules lightning, explosives, and electricity because I just talked about electrical energy. So Uranus is unforeseen events, um, things that sometimes we provoke because or we bring about because Uranus wants us to break free, right? Uranus follows Saturn and wants us to break free from you know, the rules and regulations and structure of Saturn. It's, um, you know, called the planet of rebellion, the great uh, disruptor, the great tension reliever, because when we just can't take any more of, you know, do this like this, do that like that, this has to be like this, this is the rule, this is the regulation, this is what you can't do, um, you know, things just not working out, things being slowed down because, you know, Saturn is also lack and... Um, scarcity and delays, um, you know, this really triggers Uranus's energy. Well, there's a lot of assistances in this video so far, but um, seriously, guys, yeah, this is, you know, a, a nurturing, um, you know, feminine primal energy. And this is the great, I can't do this anymore. So what this can look like, because don't forget, as I said, with the eclipse, the eclipse is happening exactly on the same degree as where Uranus is at this time. So this can be a great feeling of having to um, rebel or having to change things. Um, or it can be, as I said, Uranus brings an event from the outside. So something that is going to cause us an emotional upheaval something that is really going to affect us in terms of our emotional security and well-being. And, you know, I'm saying this, I don't, I always say I don't do scary astrology, but, you know, this is definitely a full moon um, eclipse in and of itself, as I said, is more than enough. But, you know, conjunct Uranus, there's going to be definitely some, you know, very, very intense energy going on and perhaps even some very unforeseen intense energy. And don't forget with the eclipse, there's always something eclipsed out. It can be a way of being, a way of thinking, a way of doing things. It can be a role that is assigned to us that, you know, um, or, or a way, um, you know, a, a duty, especially here in the sixth house, and I'll talk about that in a minute, but a duty or a task we have to do on a regular basis. Or it can, you know, just be hidden information related to something. And the moon, of course, is very um, intuitive. Uh, that, that feminine energy, that energy of feeling without really being able to explain it factually or rationalize it. So part of, um, you know, that emotional upheaval you'll probably be feeling or that intense emotional energy has to do maybe with the feeling that something isn't being told to you or something that is something is being hidden from you. And having said all that, you know, let's talk about the houses that this is going on in for you. So the sixth house, this is your health, your physical health. Um, it's also the house of your work, your job. So um, it also includes duties. If you're in unpaid employment, it can be, you know, your, your duties, your tasks, 
where you have responsibilities. Of course, it has everything by the same token to do with coworkers and the workplace scene or people you interact with you know, through your daily duties and responsibilities. Now, Uranus has been traveling through that house in Taurus for four years now and will continue on to 2026. So it's about an eight year stint, seven years, seven, seven to eight years in each sign. You've probably been feeling that chafing a lot, that need maybe to break free from something. Maybe your job is too restrictive. Maybe there's too many rules now or regulations. Maybe you're not, you know, getting to where you want to go fast enough, or maybe you, you feel it's restricting you from, you know, just doing what you actually wanted to do in that position. And that can apply also, you know, to daily duties, you know, in terms of health, um, it can be something like wanting to, you know, change things up with a health routine or, um, you know, just some lifestyle changes you want to bring about. Uranus is very much, a, you know, sort of a, I don't want to always say rebelling, but, you know, objecting or wanting to change or wanting to break free from the status quo and do something different. And definitely with that lunar eclipse swinging through there, things are going to get triggered. Now, across from that, because obviously the full moon takes place across from the sun, we have the sun, Venus, and Mercury in Scorpio in your 12th house. And the 12th house has everything to do more with our psychological health. The 12th house is the most hidden part of our chart in the sense it's the most internal part. It's where we go when we want to be quiet. It's, you know, our meditation room. It's our dream room. It's our, you know, taking a walk in the woods and, you know, or through a park and just being alone with our thoughts. And your 12th house sits in Scorpio. So, you know, for you, your inner world and your inner self and your soul nurturing is certainly very deep and very emotional. Um, you know, Tor Taurus, Scorpio is a water sign. The moon is the ruling planet of Cancer, another water sign. So you have a lot going on in terms of what you feel and how deeply you feel. And it isn't always easy to put into words, but it's that feeling and you know it's there. Of course, being the month or being the period before your birthday, I won't say the month because um, obviously that won't apply to you, November born Sagittarius. But, you know, the sun until it moves into your sign on the 22nd is putting the light there. So this is the time to get quiet. If you feel that need to be alone a little bit or just to reflect, you know, that sitting there doing nothing, or at least on the outside, we look like we're doing nothing, but on the inside, there can be a lot going on. We're processing a lot. This is the time to do that. This is your New Year's Eve. This is the time, you know, to take stock of what has gone on in the past year, what's worked, what hasn't worked, you know, what you want to keep doing, maybe what you don't want to keep doing or what you want to leave behind. And, you know, the, the eclipse can certainly eclipse out things, ways of doing things as well, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be a person or a, a thing or an actual physical item. It can just be ways of doing things. And certainly, you know, with the opposition of the eclipse uh, going on and also, you know, the, the sun and Venus and Mercury being in your sign for, in your sign, in your 12th house for most of the month before moving into your sign, there might be a lot of reflection between you know, what my, my jobs are paid or unpaid and how restrictive are they? How much are, do I feel they're holding me back that I can't, you know, move forward and evolve? That's all Uranus issues. And also how is this nurturing my inner self? How is this nurturing my soul well-being? You know, am I moving through the days like an automat with my routines and my duties and just, you know, fulfilling, you know, the, the jobs I have to do, fulfilling the tasks I have to do without really feeling like it's bringing me anything or I'm evolving because Uranus does want us to evolve to the next level. How is that affecting me on the inside? And the emphasis is definitely going to be there. With Venus in the 12th house, I always say it's, you know, about self-care. Venus relates to love and romance, but this is perhaps the time for some self-care and showing some, some kindness and uh, some caring to self. And with Mercury there, um, Mercury is about communication, but again, I associate the 12th house with being, you know, a bit of solitary time. You know, it's going to be 
a lot of thinking perhaps about how you are feeling and how, um, you know, how you want your, um, how you want to feed your soul, you know, and, and by the same token, your mind and how you want to go forth into your new year when that starts at the end of the month. But there will be something, definitely some heavy um, emotional un preceded stuff or unforeseen stuff going on here when the eclipse comes through on the 8th. Just forget, you know, not only is it conjuncting Uranus, which wants us to, you know, break free and move up to the next level, but it's also opposing the sun. So you're going to feel, you know, a lot of back and forth between what you have to do uh, and how that is playing off on, off of you on the inside, how that is making you feel, how you know, you see yourself, the sun is your identity and, um, you know, our vitality has a lot to do with, with us, right? It's the, the self, how your, your inner self is being affected by that. And, you know, the emotion of the full moon, especially an eclipse, there, there is energy here. And as I was just saying, whoops, in the reading before yours, you know, astrology doesn't tell you the future. It's not going to tell you exactly what pattern that form could take. And especially since, you know, I can't see everybody's individual chart. Um, you know, I, I don't know where everybody's natal planets line up, but you know, it can give you a good idea of what to expect. So around the eighth and do give yourself five days before and after, you know, do know there is something that is going to come up and it could very much come up on the work front. Um, and if you're not in paid employment, like I said, anything to do with duties, you know, things people expect you to do, roles you have taken on, perhaps you don't want to have anymore. And there could be a playing off on, um, you know, how you feel, how you feel emotionally, how that's ex affecting your inner self. Um, you know, I, I always say I don't like to do scary astrology, but you know, that, that could even, um, that could be really intense emotionally. Uh, you know, it could be something like, you know, I just, I, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, that's very Uranian. I, I don't want to do this like this anymore. I don't feel like doing this anymore. Or it just really, you know, doesn't even jive with me anymore. You know, you know when you're doing something that you really don't want to do, and even if it's just actions at work or fulfilling tasks, you know, or I don't know, sorting paper clips, it weighs down on you on the inside, right? Because it's just not where you want to be and not what you want to be doing. So do be aware of all that. I just, I'm telling you this to make you aware of all that. And I would say around eclipse time, I always say, you know, just uh, talk a little less and observe a little more and just watch how it all plays out. Just don't get over emotionally reactive. That might be hard here. You might find yourself losing it before you have time to remember you shouldn't have lost it. But then, you know, there's always time afterwards to make that decision or um, express whatever you want to express. After all that has died down, good news, <laughs> finally, a little lifting of this, this heaviness. The Venus, the, the Venus will be moving into your sign on the 16th, followed by Mercury on the 17th. And of course, the sun on the 22nd. So, you know, your birthday uh, year officially begins or your new year officially begins. And the sun, of course, is going to be lending some, his energy, his life-giving energy uh, to your first house. And this is all about you. It's you, 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 you from the 22nd on. Venus, of course, planet of relationships, harmonious relationships. Venus really wants us to enter into relationship with others. It likes cooperation. It likes people helping other people. And Mercury there. Mercury is ideas, uh, communication, commerce. So people will be attracted to you. They can be wanting to help you or perhaps you with the sun's energy are going to initiate things where you are going to get people to help you. You are going to be communicating more. You might have a lot of ideas for where you want to go in the next year. You know, this can even relate to the physical self. And Venus is certainly the planet related to beauty. So, you know, maybe you're going to undertake a sort of transformation for your birthday. You know, maybe a sort of a new look, a new wardrobe. Venus can certainly um, have a spending money for sure. <laughs> And Mercury also relates to commerce. So you could be spending money on a new look, uh, you know, changing something to do with your appearance very much. Um, you know, new ideas, like I said, for where you want to go. It's a really beautiful energy. These three together are a really beautiful energy. 
And of course, in your first house, that is going to be really, really wonderful. It's going to feel like a lightening up after the, the, um, the energy here in Scorpio, and especially with the eclipse. Scorpio is a very intense sign, very um, a water sign. So I have to, a lot to do with emotions, having a lot to do with what's hidden, which, you know, really intensifies that, that eclipse energy. And when it moves into your sign, Sag, you're a fire sign, you know, you're very um, extroverted. And I'm generalizing, of course, like I said, it depends on personal placements also. But, you know, you'll be socializing a lot. You'll be expressing yourself. And, you know, it's, a, um, it's just a, a lighter, more dynamic, more social energy um, after coming out of, of that eclipse energy and, and those planets in the 12th house in Scorpio. Now, just before I go on and talk about Mars across from you, I just want to say that the other thing affecting this eclipse, and I'll just put these guys back here for a second. The other thing affecting, affecting or that comes into play in this eclipse energy is this square to Saturn in Aquarius. And remember I was, how I said Uranus follows Saturn in our solar system and wants us to break free? The, the thing Uranus chafes against the most is Saturn's restriction. Saturn is structure and boundaries and limits, which is good when we want to build something. But it can also have a very weighty side. And Saturn is, you know, a heavy planet. It's uh, called a malefic in ancient astrology. It's not bad, but Saturn makes us work hard for what we want. The advantage is once he's done in our sign, in our sign, in whatever sign he's in or whatever house he's in, you know, we're almost specialists on that topic. But Saturn has been sitting in your third house for two years. He's went direct in October and he'll only be changing signs in 2023. But your third house is your daily communications, your daily trips around town, your neighborhood, going to school, going to work, running errands, going to appointments. You know, it's your neighbors, it's your siblings, it's also your cousins. So, you know, maybe you felt restriction in this area too. Maybe things haven't been as easy as you thought. Maybe there's delays, you know, maybe this also plays into your daily duties and your daily work. Um, you know, it could be something like a commute to work. Maybe you're just, you know, your job, like you just, the traveling is just too complicated, too far. It could be something, you know, as, as common as that. That's something that, you know, happens to a lot of us. That commute to work is always an issue. But, you know, there's a delay going on there or a restriction going on there. And it, it's playing off of 12th house, like I said, your, your soul well-being, right? Your inner self. And um, here are the 6th house, so, you know, jobs and duties. And I just wanted to touch on that. So that's, you know, another element that's going on that's going to be affecting um, things during this full moon lunar eclipse because Saturn and Uranus are locked in a square and they have been since you know September definitely October Saturn has gone direct but you know as moving so slowly he's still fiddling around at 18 19 degrees of Aquarius and um, Uranus you know at 16 barely moving so this square is still pretty tight and a square always has this feeling we have to choose one thing or the, the other, or we have to turn a corner somehow and move on to something else. So I did want to mention that too as another element that's going to intensify that whole full moon lunar eclipse energy. But uh, back to you and the sun moving into your sign and, and lightening and brightening things up. This is going to also be across from the seventh. The seventh is all your committed partnerships. So people you are in relation with, I talk about business partners and marriage partners a lot or romantic partners. Um, it can also be people with whom, you know, without having it written, you have an intense um, or a committed sense of relationship with. The seventh house relates to Libra and wants us, you know, it's all about relationships and how we relate to others also, how we enter into relationships with others, you know, what role we play, how we act within a relationship. And it bounces off us in the first house because how a relationship grows and evolves affects us. And of course, how we are is going to affect um, how our relationships with others are. Now, Mars has been in this area since August, but has gone retrograde at the very end of October. So it's just started to go retrograde and will continue retrograde through November 
Now, whatever was initiated, because Mars brings a lot of drive and a lot of energy, a lot of, um, you know, initiating energy, also a lot of individuality and focus. As much as Venus wants us to hang out with everybody, Mars doesn't care and is just off doing his thing. So, you know, you could have seen some sort of change with your relationships. It could simply be you bringing more Mars energy, um, you know, asserting your presence more, your individuality. It can be forming relationships with other people, maybe going into a business partnership with people or, you know, people you do business with, um, you know, just make putting them on retainers or something like that or having them be, you know, your go-to person for whatever you need to be done. Maybe you are taking a personal relationship to another level. Mars is very assertive, as I said, and very driven. So you could have seen progress there. However, with Mars going retrograde, that is all going to stall and slow down. You'll get the feeling that things aren't advancing there as much or that there's not as much motivation. The other thing with the planet going retrograde is not just that lack of energy, but it's that it moves backwards. So it literally goes on a loop or repeats itself or, you know, whatever was set up or whatever was agreed upon, you can see changing. Details will be changed. People will, you know, back out of whatever was agreed upon and want to change elements or back out completely. And then it's a start over. It's reviewing. This is an excellent time to do that. So don't keep trying to go forward. You're going to get the feeling you're hitting a wall. But do take the time to fine tune, to review, to put in a plan B, to, you know, get the details together so that when Mars does begin moving forward again, and I believe that will go into 20, yes, it will go into 2023, then you're ready to, you know, use that energy in the best way possible to go forward because you'll know what the plan is. The danger of Mars and Gemini is always having too many ideas or too many goals or too many plans. So you do want to review. And then when Mars has that forward energy going, you're ready, you're ready to go with it. So don't expect to move forward here in this area. Like I said, it's, it's review and fine tune and, um, you know, replan, so to speak. But on the other hand, Jupiter is, is going direct and Jupiter will be going direct on the 23rd. So just after the sun moves into your sign and you get the feeling of the energy lightening up, Jupiter will go direct. So that's also good news. Jupiter is very beneficial, bringing opportunities and solutions and ideas, um, helping us learn. Jupiter started going retrograde when he was in Aries, backed up into Pisces and is going retrograde again in Pisces and will be back in Aries in 2023. Now, whatever is going forward again in terms of fourth house things, so home, family, um, you know, uh, family of choice, your, your related family, people you consider family, you know, the your very people very close to you, like I said, you consider family, even your physical house, you know, where you feel at home, but also your physical home in terms of real estate, you'll be seeing a lightning as Jupiter moves forward again. You know, the that stuck energy or that feeling of review or repeat will begin to lessen. And, you know, with Jupiter moving forward, maybe, you know, that fog of Neptune will begin to clear. I have two videos on Neptune. Neptune brings a lot of blur to this area and, and other issues as well. Um, but this, what I wanted to say is this moving forward energy of Jupiter, you know, finally bringing, uh, you know, some, some solutions or some, you know, beneficial energy as, as Jupiter becomes stronger, moving direct also might have an element of closure or finality to it, or the, the finalization of a project, because don't forget, whoops, Jupiter backed up into Pisces. So Jupiter went over this area once all the way into Aries, began retrograding back over this section of your chart and is now moving forward again. So maybe there's a closure element as well. You know, maybe there was literally a, a home decorating or renovating project and, you know, it sort of stalled or became more difficult as Jupiter um, retrograded. But now, you know, it's going to go forward again and it's going to complete itself. Or it can be something even related to family, you know, family members, something um, that, that was started or thought about or decided and now, you know, the final um, steps will be taken and, you know, either the problem will be solved or something will be completed or closed or, or ended in that respect. 
So Sagittarius, that is what I wanted to tell you for the month of November and what I wanted you to know, especially in relation to the full moon lunar eclipse that is going to bring a lot of intense energy and some emotional, some upheavals for sure, perhaps some emotional upheavals. Um, and of course, some beautiful energy at the end of the month with Jupiter going direct and these uh, three guys going through your first house. So Sag, don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe and share this with someone you think might find it interesting. Take care. Love you. Bye.